Morning everybody! Welcome to day 81 of Level Grinding. It is still the weekend. It is Sunday. Woke up completely late because we were out uh, watching Harry Potter last night. So we got in really late, went to bed really late, and totally overslept this morning. Um, today is a day of rest, and so I'm going to be doing my favorite thing, which is baking. And while I'm baking, Robo is busy working on our new credenza. It's really close to being finished, and so it's really exciting to see this take shape. And I'm excited because it's going to open up a lot more space in our living room. Look at that! Looks good, baby. Not only is baking one of my hobbies, but cracking gluten recipes into gluten-free recipes is also a hobby. So today I am attempting to hack apart a baked buttermilk uh, donut recipe. They're not fried, but they're made with buttermilk, and I'm trying my hand at seeing how well I can convert this. These days, because I've been cooking gluten-free for about 10 years, I'm usually pretty good the first time I do this, um, but I take a lot of notes in a notebook, and I write down what I'm doing so that I know that if it doesn't come out right, I can make adjustments to my recipe later. And this is something that I really, really love to do because it expands my recipes that I can make. I can make a whole lot more better foods for people, especially when folks are like, oh my gosh, I just went gluten-free, and I really wish I could still eat a... When somebody tells me that, I'm like, all the time, tell me what do you want, what do you wish, what do you wish that you could still eat because now you just went gluten-free and I like to make it for them. So this, if it comes out right, will go into that recipe book. Um, but this is something that just makes me happy. It allows me to rest and uh, yeah, one of my hobbies. If you are going to really get into gluten-free baking, you're gonna find that you need a lot of different flours to replace wheat flour, and it's because no one flour does everything correctly. And I know as much as this says that this is all-purpose gluten-free flour, and they would love you to have you say that this is what you could use in replacement for everything, I have found that no, that is not the case at all. You only can use bits and pieces of things if you really wanna get the texture out of your gluten-free baked goods that you want. This is why I love to geek out about this stuff. So for example, in this recipe, I'm using sorghum flour. Um, it, the recipe called originally for two-thirds cup of wheat flour. I like to replace wheat flour specifically with sorghum flour. It has that slightly nutty taste that you normally find in wheat. So I like using this. Um, then the other thing that I used was my all-purpose gluten-free flour. This comes from Bob's Red Mill. Um, and I like it a lot. It makes a really great uh, baked good. However, it features a lot of bean flours. And bean flours are really good for stretch factor. But if you don't cook things all the way, they tend to come out tasting a bit like a bean. So I don't like using straight, all-purpose gluten-free flour from Bob's Red Mill. So that's when I cut it with my basic GF mix. And this is a basic mix that you can find in almost every single gluten-free cookbook. Um, it is a mixture of white rice flour, tapioca starch, and potato starch. And I keep, <laughs> I keep all of those basic ingredients back here, behind everything else. So, yeah. You need a lot of different uh, things when you are gluten-free baking uh, because each thing does its own thing and yeah, baking is, is chemistry and you don't really realize just how much it's of chemistry until you start baking gluten-free and realizing that different flours give you different reactions. More progress on the credenza. Robo's got to now fit the uh, back on top of it. Because this thing has had so many goof-ups during its uh, original build process, the back is now actually larger than what the resulting box is, so it, it needs a little bit of uh, adjustments. You ready to do them? Goof-ups? Goof-ups! And modifications. Modifications. Changes of plans. And my first donuts are in the oven. Let's see if we can get this thing to like focus on something else. Okay, it's not going to, but they're in the oven. And cool technique that I discovered this morning while reading blogs. It's amazing what happens when you read blogs. When I have made my donuts in the past and I've baked them, all I've done is just stick them in the, the pan, you know, and, and tapped them in with a 
with a spoon and they looked okay when they came out, but they had all these funky bottoms. Well, this person that I was reading this morning where I found this recipe from and that I hacked um, said to put things into a pastry bag or pastry um, squirt or whatever we call this thing. A pot, uh, yeah, whatever it is. You know what it is. Um, to use this and, and pipe it into the pans and that gets the nice smooth top. And I was like, oh my gosh, what a brilliant idea. So I've been doing this this time. Yay, we'll see how these come out. Ooh, first batch out of the oven and, and just look. Look at how nice those tops are. Ooh, these are gonna frost up nice. The last batch is out and cooling a bit. And these ones have all been glazed. And these ones we're gonna eat. Yummy! Hey, husband, it's yeah. time for food. Almost done. Almost done? You ready to eat these lovely looking things? Yeah. Yummy. Radar, you gonna eat these lovely looking things too? Yes, mommy. Let me get your butt out of my plate. Okay, moment of truth. You wanna get in here, Robo? Okay. Ha ha. Mmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, this recipe is a keeper. Yum, yum. What do you think? I think I'm having more. Yeah? Oh boy, so uh, I just did some artwork this afternoon. Robo continued working on the credenza, and then we realized it was getting really late. Friends of ours had invited us over to watch the Golden Globes with them tonight, so we quickly got ready and we're going to go. But Robo just got the mail, and I got paid by one of my producers, hooray. It is always lovely when I get these in the mail. Thank you, Rodney, you're awesome and I love working with you, dude. It's the end of the evening. It's the end of the day Sunday, the end of the first weekend in January. Tomorrow is the first Monday, first work Monday of 2018, and I'm excited to get started. This weekend was about resting. It was about having fun, about enjoying things. And, you know, today as I was cooking and baking my donut recipe that came out great, by the way, um, I had this thought about how you, when you are resting, you need to do things that you enjoy doing. What looks like rest for me may not be rest for you. But when you take the time to do the things that help you rest, that help you breathe, have fun, to approach and appreciate things in life from a different perspective, a little bit slower, that give you the opportunity to geek out and nerd out and have fun without being on somebody else's timeline or somebody else's payroll. It's the things that allow your brain to stretch. And we need rest. We need rest to be creative. We need rest to hustle hard. We need rest to be human beings, to be healthy. Um, we can't skip it. We can't work without it. Um, you have to take this in order to be successful. And so for me, taking a weekend to rest well, to enjoy being outside, to enjoy being up at uh, Celestial Seasonings and getting some tea, being out at the symphony last night, or baking donuts this morning, or even hanging out with friends this evening as we all watch the Golden Globes. Like Those are things that are important, and they are the moments that sustain me to make it through all the headaches and all of the shenanigans that happen in the regular day-to-day -day hustle. So that's my, my thought about rest. Um, that's how I'm going to end today's video. So if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you have questions or comments, leave them below. Also, I'd love to hear about what are your favorite ways of resting. Um, I feel like sometimes we talk a lot about what's your favorite way to do work, what's our favorite way to get work done, what's our favorite productivity hack, but we don't always talk about what's our favorite way is just to stop and relax and rest after a long work week. So go ahead and comment with those if you have a good thought. And if you've not yet subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. I'll see you all tomorrow as we get back to the hustle on Monday. Ciao.